Swinburne University of Technology. I sometimes have students say to me, oh, the weight of an object actually stands for mass. Well, no, it doesn't. Not at all. The weight is the gravitational force, and that acts through every single atom in the body. And that spread throughout the body. Having said that, um, well, that's not true. For some purposes, it's very useful to treat the weight as acting through the centre of mass. It's not actually acting through there, but it's useful to treat it as though it were. Give an example. Here's a, um, well, actually, it's not a very good drawing, but it's, it's just a rod, or it might think it's being a ruler, and it's like so. And what it's doing is being rotated about a point there. So clearly it will go in that direction. Why? Well, because that part there, the little m, has a weight downwards, and multiply that by this distance there, R, will give me the torque in the clockwise direction. What I then do is I do the same thing for this, the mass, and I have the distance from that to there, and then I take another mass and the distance from that to there, add them all up, takes a long time. Um, how long? Depends on how big you make M. If you make it really, really, really tiny, you're going to have an awfully long time just adding these up. In fact, we don't do that. The clue is I make it M very, really, really tiny. In fact, I make it infinitesimally small and I can use calculus. So instead of having to sum all these up, I can use calculus. And when I do, this is what I get. Now, the symbol for torque is that. This is the torque for the whole body, some of the terms above here. And we find out from calculus that it equals this. In other words, instead of doing that, I can do that. What it says is, if I take the weight mg, where m is the total mass of the ruler, and multiply by that distance, which is half the length of the ruler, in other words, exactly where the centre of mass is located, I get the torque. Much easier. But you may say, well, that's OK for something like a, a ruler. What about if you've got something like, oh, now this is, now I'm going to draw a shape like this. What about that shape? Um, again, in principle, what you do Take a pivot point, and you want to find the torque about this. Now, clearly, there'll be some parts of it like this. Mg. Uh, we do a line. Da, 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 da. And the torque for that bit is Mg multiplied by the perpendicular distance to the pivot point. We do that for every single bit of mass on the right-hand side. That makes it go clockwise. Then what we do, we go to the other side, and we will take mg for every single bit of mass on the left hand side and that makes it go and a clockwise and then we take the difference clockwise to anti-clockwise um, yeah, how long is it going to take you? far too long uh, oh can we use calculus? Oh, well, hardly um, that sort of shape doesn't lend itself to a nice simple, equate, nice, simple piece of mathematics that looks a bit tricky to me um, Oh dear. Ah. But what if what I said before about the ruler was generally true? In other words, and I'll draw this again, and now I won't draw it again, I'll just use a different colour. Much easier. Ah. Suppose you know the centre of mass. Suppose it's there. Now, with the ruler, what I did, I, I assumed that all the weight, mg, acts through the centre of mass. And then I took the perpendicular distance to the pivot point, and we call this R dash to distinguish from this R. And you know, mg, the total weight, multiplied by the distance from the pivot point to the centre of mass, as though the weight is acting through the centre of mass, will give you the right answer. How nice is that? We can use that for all shapes. Now you may say, um, how do I find the centre of mass? Easy for the root, it's halfway, it has to be. Um, this shape, hmm, 
there are nice equations that determine the centre of mass, but they're okay if you've got nice simple shapes. With something like this, well, mathematically, I really don't know how you can do it. But here's a way of doing it experimentally. Now, I'm going to try and, well, I'm going to try and redraw this shape. It's going to be pretty nasty. Uh, it's the best I can do. Supposing we let it, the thing pivot and then just come to rest. And it's going to look something like, oh dear, oh dear. That's supposed to be the same thing I've just done there. It doesn't look much like it, does it? Hell, close enough. Um, here is the pivot point. Okay. Now, it's not rotating. If it's not rotating, it means that must be zero. If that's zero, it means that must be zero. In other words, the distance horizontally between the centre of mass and the pivot point must be zero. In other words, when I go down like this, the centre of mass must be somewhere along that line. And that's what we do. We suspend it, and we let it come to rest, and we mark a perpendicular line down like this. Well, I know the centre mass is down that line. I'm not quite sure where on the line it is. Well, let's um, see if we can pinpoint it. Not difficult. What we do, we take another point, and we suspend it from that. Now, I'm not going to attempt to draw this again. Right? But if I did, um, I'd do exactly the same as I did with the first one, and I go like that, and I end up with a line that goes through the centre mass. Well, if that line goes through the centre mass, and that line goes through the centre mass, that must be the centre mass. Easy. Easy. The centre mass comes in in another context as well. If I have a, a ball, for example, um, that's ground, I throw the ball, the shape it goes through is a parabola, and the equation of kinematics gives you that equation. It's not, it's not difficult. What happens if I were to throw something else, not a ball, but a hammer? Uh, this is not much of a hammer, uh, but it's the best I can do. Um, do you notice something? The hammer's rotating. Oh dear, oh dear. It's getting worse and worse. I'm upside down there. There you go. The hammer's rotating. Spinning. But, See that point there, and that point there, and that point there, and that point there? That's the centre of mass. It's the centre of mass that follows that problem. It's the same tree if you have a long jumper. Now, I'm not going to attempt to draw a long jumper. Lord above the hammer is enough for me. Even though the, the uh, long jumper is waving his arms and legs in the air, um, the centre of mass is changing all over, the, all over the place. But it's still the centre of mass that would trace out the same parabola. Let's try another shape. Now, this is supposed to be my version of a sort of, sort of a boomerang. It's not a boomerang, it's that shape. Um, where's the centre of mass? Well, it'd be somewhere around about there, I reckon. Yeah. It's still even in the body. But that's where it is. That means, if I were to throw a boomerang through the air, of this shape, uh, it's the centre of mass that will follow the parabola. So as the boomerang goes through the air, traces out the parabolic shape, but it's the centre of mass about which it rotates. It's really odd. Um, it's strange. Hmm, it's true. This has been a Swinburne production.